this is the cover of R&B artist Frank Ocean's 2016 studio album, Blonde. It's just over 60 minutes of songs that cover heartbreak, solitude, and the preconceived notions of masculinity. I really, really love this album, but trying to analyze all of its moving pieces is not an easy task. So instead, I would rather focus on the album's cover, specifically the man behind the lens, German photographer Wolfgang Tillmans. Tillmans was born in 1968 in Western Germany, and he took an interest in visual-based art at a very young age. He was inspired by the photo-based works from people like Gerhard Richter, Sigmar Polk, and Andy Warhol. Then around his mid-teenage years, he spent time in England as an exchange student, where he learned about British youth culture, local fashion, and different music magazines of the time. Around the same time, the photographer came out as a gay man, and he'd established himself in the counterculture thanks to his photos capturing the nightclub scene and gay culture in Hamburg's red light district. But, in his own words, he never wanted to be known as just a gay artist. For him, his photos were about representation and showing people being free and living their lives. This philosophy shifted when Tillmans was a young adult. When he was 26, Tillmans' boyfriend at the time, German painter Jochen Klein, was diagnosed with HIV. Klein's diagnosis came too late, and he died of age-related complications several weeks later. The experience shook Tillmans. Not only did he lose someone he loved, but he himself now also had the disease. And, and is, then the, is that still how you approach it in your work? So if you're making work that deals with AIDS or HIV, is it still from that interest in it as a as something scientific, or is it more, you mentioned the kind of the sense of a personal threat that, you know, I think gay men feel. Which way is it that you approach it? Is it the kind of personal way? Or the I mean, it's, it's um, I mean, I, um, it, it impacted my life uh, from the, um, the first day of experiencing, uh, having um, sex. Um, but of course, then um, it did, um, um, like impact my life because my um, boyfriend Jochen Klein uh, suddenly died of it um, mm. at a time when um, it theoretically therapy was possible but um, he found out too late um, and uh, and then um, I uh, found out I'm myself um, HIV positive um, but um, I never made that uh, um, active subject in my work because um, I, you know, people are so scared of AIDS. Yeah. They think that everything in the work is then foreshadowing, foreshadowing yeah. this. No, but you know, when I was sixteen, um, I was um, having sleepless nights because I had um, um, had sex with a guy mm -hmm. and. Uh, and um, thinking I'm dying no? because I had a swollen gland, and yeah. of course it was just hypochondriacism. But so then, I mean, AIDS always was in my life uh, as a since I was an adult being, um, and so um, now I'm, um, you know, it doesn't, it, it it has featured in my work in the way that it is that I'm aware that um, the fragility of mm. life. And that, um, that uh, of course, um, you know... With an altered outlook on life, Tillmans became a more vocal advocate for LGBTQ communities, and he involved himself more in HIV-AIDS awareness campaigns. Two of his photos that reflect this new philosophy are 2002's The Cock Kiss and 2014's 17 Year Supply. The Cock Kiss represents two men engaging in an intimate well, kiss. While meant to be a display of love, the photo has become equal parts political over its lifetime. During one of its earliest exhibitions at the Hirschhorn Art Museum, the portrait was vandalized and slashed. More than a decade later, the picture was circulated around social media in the wake of the 2016 Pulse nightclub shooting, which left 49 people dead and another 53 injured. Sharing the picture was a gesture of pride, freedom, and resolve in the face of deadly homophobia. Meanwhile, 17 Year Supply is a stark photo of a fairly large box filled to the brim with various HIV medications, some of which are Tillman's. The piece is a visualization of the ongoing fight against HIV AIDS that millions have to go through every day. 
In 2001, Tillmans also won first prize on a competition for the design of the Munich AIDS Memorial. His design still stands and it honors the dead, the infected, their friends, and their families. Of course, the German has also won other awards as well. In 2000, he became the first non-British person to win the highly publicized Turner Prize. The award is typically given to British visual artists, but they made an exception for Tillmans. Tillman's impressive resume and his cultural impact led to him being contacted by the fashion publication Fantastic Man around 2015. They wanted Tillman's to photograph Frank Ocean for their 10th anniversary cover story, but according to Tillman's, the shoot was difficult to say the least. Ocean would cancel, reschedule, and then cancel again, over and over. The process exhausted Tillman until he retired back to his home in Berlin. However, as fate would have it, Frank was interested in going to the Bergain, a famous nightclub in the city. Tillmans was, perhaps rightfully, doubtful that this would actually happen, but eventually the two would meet in Berlin, spend the night clubbing together, and finally had the blonde shoot. Or what we know had become the blonde shoot. At the time, neither Tillmans nor Fantastic Man knew this would be the case yet. One day, Ocean suddenly had his lawyers send letters to Fantastic Man, barring them from using the photo. And initially, Tillmans was understandably frustrated. He called the whole process unfair, but despite this, the two artists kept in touch. In one of their conversations, Ocean asked Tillmans for permission to use the photo for an upcoming album. Tillmans agreed, and on August 20th, 2016, Frank Ocean released Blonde. Its cover immediately became iconic and has been interpreted to mean a variety of things. For example, it could be a visualization of accessibility versus privacy. We see a shirtless Frank Ocean in what we know as the bathroom, yet he's hiding his face. Blonde is largely autobiographical. We learn a lot about Frank's past and his personal life through his various songs and skits. Yet, he doesn't look the camera, us, in the eye. There's a disconnect between the intimate lyrics that we hear and Ocean's obscured face, which we can't really see. Blonde also deals with vulnerability and this idea of masculinity versus femininity. Frank could be interpreted to be crying and trying to hide his tears. The idea reoccurs all throughout Blonde and it keeps in theme with the Boys Don't Cry zine that released alongside the album. The zine itself is named after the 1999 film which dramatized the real life story of Brandon Tina, a trans male who was a victim of a brutal hate crime. Wolfgang Tillman's made a name for himself capturing the lives and emotions of people he felt to be underrepresented in the world. His shots, while admittedly mundane to some, are also striking representations of real life to others, and his work with Frank Ocean on the blonde cover fits into that mold flawlessly, I'd say. Meanwhile, for Ocean, it's also an incredibly fitting cover that, in hindsight, reveals more about the album and its themes than most people would realize. Ultimately, the cover is the perfect collaboration between two thoughtful and polarizing artists doing what they each do best. So first things first, if you're still listening, I just want to thank you so much for actually sticking around through this whole thing. It really does mean a lot. Secondly, if you've watched this far, you might be interested to know that this video is a very, and I do mean very, condensed version of an article I posted to my website, the KJ Archives. Over there, I went way more in depth about Wolfgang Tillmans and what the photo means for the Blonde album as a whole. So if you think you want to learn more about that whole process, head over to the KJ Archives and give it a read. 